There was a cracking game of football yesterday. Adam Armstrong scoring a 97th minute penalty to salvage a draw against Norwich. First home game of the new season. For all the final score. Uh, Glenn, my take was was still as bad as defending as last season, but at least maybe this year we might <laughs> score a few. Um, what, was, what was your thoughts coming away from the ground yesterday? Oh, it was absolutely mental, wasn't it? It was just, <laughs> it was just a mad game from start to finish. And, you know... I mean, if you discount the the four all with Liverpool in the last game of the season, because that was effectively a glorified mm. friendly, wasn't it? Because we were already down and they had nothing to play for. Uh, it, it's it's the most entertaining game back going back to the Ronald Koeman era. With our, it, it was just it was just brilliant to watch. Uh, you only get entertaining games like that if the defences are shambolic, <laughs> and and ours was awful, and Norwich were almost as bad. So. That that was that was what I, I tend to watch defensive play more than attack and play for some reason. That's just just me, but yeah, I mean some of it. I mean I was I was just shaking my head all the way through it uh, at, at some of the defending. The, the first the first Norwich goal in particular. If you if you break it down, the hmm. ball gets played to Ashley Barnes. No one Stevens is kind of there, but he doesn't pressure him. He's allowed to bring it down, take a touch, knock it wide to the unmarked Stacey, who Idozi has not tracked. Manning has not got out to him. Stacey's been allowed to take a touch, cross it to the back post. Bednarek has lost um, Sargent, who heads it into an empty net from two yards. It, it's like, that's just horrible. That's so many people not doing their job. And um, It's very last year, isn't it? Very last season for us. Well, well, I mean, I not think... last five years. Yeah, least. but I mean, last year we had a different problem in that, it, you know, we, we, we coughed up the odd bad goal. Uh, but in the main, you know, the, the stats say that our defending wasn't actually that bad. We had problems in goal. Um, so, I mean, so, but yeah, you, you you can look at that. But it was just fantastic going forward. You know, I just I just love the way we we flooded forward. And, and it was it was just chaotic. I mean, we saw a little bit of this in the, um, we saw it coming. I think the preseason game in front, uh, preseason friendly against Reading. Hmm. where we saw all the midfield flying forward. You know, Will Smallbone is nominally the defensive midfielder. He He's okay in... He makes a lot of interceptions in sort of tight areas. But if the game gets strung out and we get broken on, he's not he's not quick enough and he's not, you know, he's not sort of defensive-minded enough to be able to cover that whole area on his own. So so then it comes down to the defenders. And you've all, all, all our defenders were making horrendous errors yesterday as well. But but our attacking play was great, and the the commitment to to attack when we were behind three times, um, the spirit that we showed to to get back into it, you know, three times was um, was tremendous. But you won't get many teams setting up in a you know it was a, a two zero eight formation at times. Um, the, the fullbacks were kind of there to start with, and then and then they just just sort of gave up. Um, and uh, I, I looked at Alfie's um, marks that he gave the players in the paper and on all the defenders, he was like part of a defence that let in four goals at home, <laughs> which is a very like lazy cut and paste effort by you, Alfie. There. But I, I totally, <laughs> I, I, I totally, I totally agree. You, you just, you know, the, it's funny. You see those four players warm up as a unit. And then as soon as the game starts, it's just like, now nah, we won't bother with being a unit whatsoever. We'll just we'll just do our own thing. But I, you know, I loved the game. I yeah, it was a fair result at the end of the day. Um, thought our penalty in the last minute was a bit dodgy, but we haven't got VAR anymore. So happy days. That was so nice, wasn't it? So nice. Um, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, you know, I went on about it last year, that Theo Walcott goal that got disallowed at um mm. at Brighton. That was the final straw for me with VAR. And it, it's it's been brilliant so far in the two games that we've had. And I think the EFL should, you know, resist with every breath in its body. Mm-hmm. The, um, you know, if, if, if they have, think about trying to have VAR, because the EFL seems to be for the fans, the Premier League is for the TV audiences. They haven't so, got the officials. I don't, I don't think they'd, they'd ever be able to do it. They haven't got the numbers. No, no. And, that, and that's, yeah, that's that's as good a reason as any. Um, a long way that continues. Yeah, yeah. We'll, get, we'll, we'll get some rubbish decisions. Of course we will. But to be honest, I, I, I enjoyed the game so much yesterday, even though we didn't win, that, um, yeah, that's what it's about. It's about the fans' experience in the ground. And that was brilliant. Uh, and the rubbish decisions give us plenty to talk about afterwards. So <laughs> Absolutely. That's, uh, I mean, Steve, we said uh, last week there's been plenty of decent games between the two sides over the years. But what did you make of that yesterday? Because uh, I was, I, we could have won it at the end as well. 
Yeah, I mean, it was it was interesting. I, wa- I watched the um, I watched the highlights back again earlier, and yeah, on on the replay from behind the goal, um, when you see that um, Alcaraz chance in the what ninety ninth minute, um, actually, if he does what I've what he's what I've seen him do before, I think I think the Arsenal goal where he scored early doors, he kind of gave the keeper the eyes and went across him. And it actually, I think if he does that again in this situation, um, Gunn's got no chance because there's two defenders blocking his line of vision. But um, because he's gone the other side, it's it's a um, smaller margin for error, um, unfortunately. So, um, yes, um, I mean, if you're splitting hairs, that's a missed opportunity to have beaten them 5-4 for the second time um, in the last 30, 30 years. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that game was just absolutely mental, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, completely agree uh, with Glenn that that's a game that doesn't happen if both teams are set up um, with sort of proper a proper defensive structure. Um, and yeah, we just didn't have didn't have that in the slightest. Um, I think um, yeah, as, as I said earlier, Shea Charles showed in that little cameo that I think he's going to be the guy going forward who is um, who is going to have that role. And then you're going to be picking two from whoever's left for the other the other three midfield places. Or, I think, or whoever comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, Lynn Downs is is heavily linked from uh, from West Ham as I mean, it's not a, not a proper make weight in the deal, but it's a as a separate separate move to come in on loan, and he knows the system and and has played under Martin before, so yeah, it should hit the ground running, but. I mean, there's no guarantee that he gets into that into that side at the moment, um, which can only be can only be a good thing, I think. Mm. If you've got genuine competition for places, um, I mean, we obviously know there's one position at the moment that we don't have that, um, and I mean, Bazuni wasn't at fault for any of the goals um, yesterday, but you you still sense that there is likely a a problem on the horizon at some point. Um, I mean, he was, he was, as I say, he was fine yesterday. Took a, claimed a couple of crosses um, when needed. Made that good save down the down the striker's feet in the second half. Um, so I'm not. It's not panic stations by any stretch of the imagination there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's something that's that's probably going to have to be kept an eye on. Um, but I've seen links that um, supposedly Palace want. Um, uh, want McCarthy, which I mean, if they do, I will happily he, he drive, must down, have drive, down, himself, drive down to sure. Southampton <laughs> and, and give, him a, give him a lift back up, back up here to Croydon all, all by myself. That's I'm you absolutely on, on board with this. You can stay in your spare room, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Um, Alfie, I mean, it's a difficult one to sum up yesterday. I mean, should it be a case we're disappointed we didn't get the three points in a home game, or is it a case of well, at least we didn't lose? Yeah, I mean, I think Russell Martin after the game said that he'd have been really, really angry if they if they had lost. I think he was pretty satisfied that a point was probably the right result. Now, I agree with Stephen Glenn that when I look at a back four of you know Walker, Peters, Bednarek, Stevens, and Manning in the championship, I just don't think that's going to be a problem. But as it happened, it wasn't a back four, was it at all? Really, it was a back two, and I think it was actually mostly what's in front. I know Steve has said that you know he doesn't necessarily think the Warpowers not being there was the problem, but I do think that Will Smallburn was excellent at Sheffield Wednesday in that whatever you want to call it, number six or holding role. But he was playing against a team that were were not making any efforts to come out. You know, they were they were sitting back, ten men behind the ball a lot of the time. Whereas credit to Norwich, I thought they were really brave. Um, you know, pushing players forward. They left two powerful forwards at the top yeah. of the pitch every single time, and that was why Stevens and Bednarek had a bit of a nightmare because they didn't have the fullbacks to support them when they, they probably were going man for man most of the game. And then Shea Charles, as as been mentioned, really impressive, came on and just stopped that transition. You know, slowed it down a little bit and was able to pick off the, those counters, and that was that was superb. One thing that David Wagner said after the match, though, was that um, they spoke about the fact that this Southampton team is small. You know, there's nobody really imposing or big in the team. And the teams are, you know, cottoning onto that now. And they're, they're targeting set pieces. And this Andreas Georgeson guy's got a, a big job on his hands because teams are noticing it. And although, you know, Will Smallbone and Ryan Manning, their offensive corners are really good. Once again, they, they're not dealing with the Norwich ones. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed the fact it was a good ovation at the end, to be fair. You know, because when you can see four goals at home, you you... Ryan Manning's you know, chucked one into the back of his own net effectively. No marking for the header. Um, set piece goal again. And to be fair, one one the goal. I did worry that that would be, you know, not what the sport has wanted. Um, obviously it's not, but the ovation at the end was was nice. It was a, a signal that, you know, this is a lot better than losing one in every week. And I think everyone agrees with that. I think there was a couple of altercations in the Northern end, apparently, that some people were booing and just saying that it's a defensive horror show, and they're absolutely right. But 
I think uh, the vast majority of people will think this is the way forward. Yeah, well, if there's a lot of uh, new season ticket holders, new families going along for the first time because they can suddenly afford it or that the games are a, a more favourable time, then they've come away yesterday thinking, this is brilliant. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm glad we've got uh, got tickets for this. Um, Glenn, let's just touch on that um, defensive and that back four. That is that is our back four by the sounds of it to to, to stay. I know like now, our now. Bella Kotchap is off, but when Jack Stevens is named captain, you think that means he's a nailed on starter. So is it more about that? defensive midfielder and, and getting that right that's going to be the the key and and who sits in front of them um yeah you have to get the midfield structure right and as Stephen and Alfie both said with show Charles made quite a big difference in the second half you think in the second half we only well we only conceded one goal and that was the uh lovely cushion set up by um by Ryan Manning but so you know Norwich didn't cause us as many problems in the second half um I I mean I it was bordering on suicidal yesterday, some of it, because as Alfie said, they left two guys up front. So it stands to reason you need three players back. <laughs> you can't just you can't just go two on two. I mean, most club most teams play with one up, don't they? So you can you can possibly get away with playing, you know, two against one centre forward, and the, and the fullbacks can be a little bit more more free. But yeah, I mean, there, there should have been someone there, and. As our captain is a centre back, you you would hope that he was screaming at Manning and Walker Peters to actually hold their positions a little bit to um, to give them some sort of cover. But um, I I just thought we weren't aggressive enough with our defending. I mean, that first goal I described. I mean, you, you can't let thirty three year old slow Ashley Barnes bring the ball down and take his time and knock it off. That is, you know he didn't even knock it off first time. He took a touch. You've got to be in on his touch. Get him, and that was what when um, Salasu and Bella Kochap were playing well for that brief period at the start of last season. That, that is what they were doing. Yeah, they were they they you know they just they, they were right into the the attackers. Bednarek can do that, but he didn't yesterday. He, he would he had a bit of a bit of a beast in the first half. I know he scored, but he was he looked way off it in the first half. Um, so they have to get that that defensive structure right. Um, I mean. Prousey not being there meant that, yeah, we have Will Smallbone as the as the nominal defensive midfielder. You got Alcaraz and Stuart Armstrong; they don't track runners at all. The pair of them, not at all. So anyone anyone running through, um, Sam uh, Nathan Teller does a decent job tracking back. Sam Adozi still has a bit to learn, I think. Mm. Um, and that that was that was something from the first goal as well. It's worth and, mentioning that Armstrong might be... with the best bit of defensive work by the yeah, way. Well, that yeah. 50 yard sprint back and, uh, and yeah. sliding challenge. And Russell did yeah. credit that after the game as well. He pointed that out to us and made sure that we, we reported on that. Um, it's worth mentioning that they probably will be forced into a midfield change next week anyway, because Will Smoban's obviously gone off with a, a whack to the ankle and he's having a scan at some point in the next couple of days. So he might be out for a week or two, or hopefully not yeah. more. Um, so they might be forced into that change anyway. We might be looking at Charles, Stewie and Charlie again. Um, and we'll see how that goes. And yeah. yeah, it's going to be a big miss. Um, Steve, Jack Stevens' first game as new captain, probably not the result he would have wanted. I guess he would have been hoping for uh, three points at home. But as we said, that means he's probably a nailed on starter now. Um, obvious choice for captain or just slim pickings? There's not a lot of other people that are they're jumping out at the moment. Um, how about both? Um, yeah, I, th- I think ultimately he's he's the mo- he's the obvious choice just from the way he conducts himself on the pitch. He is the he is the defensive organizer, um, and by all accounts, is the same in the dressing room and and at Staplewood that he is kind of a leader. Um, the problem I think the problem I mean the problem I've certainly had in in the past, and I've said said as much on countless occasions, is that while he's brilliant at, at organizing others. Um, he's less less competent at organising himself at times, hmm. and that's that's kind of where he's got to step up. Um, I mean, you'll you'll get away with it a lot more in the Championship than you will do in the Premier League. Um, but we're already seeing that teams are taking advantage of us being a little bit slack at the back. I mean, ultimately, I think a lot a lot of the problem is as as Alfie pointed out that David Wagner said that we're a small team. We've literally like our two centre backs are six one and six two. Um, our goalkeeper, I think, is six two. And then um, I mean, assuming Shay Charles come comes into the starting lineup, he's six three. Um, other than that, um, we are short. And we just don't have we just don't have height. Both both our full backs are five six. 
Um, one of our replacement fullback options is five six. Um, and then you've got a load of diminutive sort of wide attacking players. Um, you bring Shea Adams into the team, which I assume will probably happen next week with a dozy presumably out for a, out for a bit um, with the injury that forced him off yes, yesterday. Um, and all of a sudden you've got you've then got four players who are competent in the air. That get that automatically. I mean, that obviously doubles the, the number that we had in the first half yesterday. Um, so that gives you gives you a better grounding. And it's then when you've got that competence and just physical attributes, really, um, then you can start working on what your best defensive system is. I've seen people saying, oh, well, it's because we're zonal marking. No, it's not. It's because we're, it's because we're a team of midgets. We're all, we're, all, we're, all five, we're all five foot eight, five foot nine, and nobody can jump above the, the, the six foot four cent, cent, center back that the opposition's got. That's, um, that they're throwing forward for um, for every set piece. Yeah. That's that's the problem. It's not even that we're leaving them unmarked because even if they were challenged, um, that would still be happening. Um, and I think like on on the third goal, it's just I mean that's that's not even been a particularly tall guy won the header. That's just somebody <laughs> not um, not doing their job. I mean, there's yeah. absolutely no way that a, that a defensive system coached by any manager at any sort of level. Um, is instructing their players to um, leave a guy in with a five-yard radius in um, sort of on the edge of the six-yard box. Um, that's just madness. Um, so some someone don't know who it is uh, Teller. I think is the closest player to him, but I'm not sure. I can't imagine that he was assigned to um, to pick anybody up there. Um, so yeah, I mean they'll they'll obviously go back and analyse that and work out work out who's to blame. But I'm sure the um, I'm sure the players the players will know exactly who who should have been um at least somewhere vaguely near him when he when as he we say the uh, the new set piece coach is going to certainly earn his money isn't he um, well i mean uh, i mean that's, <laughs> the, that's the hard, hardest, gonna, job, hardest job in the world that is he's going to resign on ste- on day one <laughs> <laughs> he's going to meet one larios and go no i'm going to see you <laughs> i'm going to ask least, you about at least, um, at least we scored from a set piece today um, we did well that's what i was going to say i'm going to ask you about player of the week in just a moment but glenn i just wanted to touch oh. on the, the the set plays and things yesterday because mm. um look Prousey, fantastic and as we said earlier on, we wish him well. But actually, it was nice to see a little bit of variation, other people getting involved in the corners. We're going to see that with the free kicks now. Um, and I don't know, does he score two penalties in, in a game? It was nice to see. They weren't brilliant penalties, but it was nice to see someone stepping up with a bit of confidence and going, do you know what? I, I think he's going to nail that. Yeah, I mean, Adam Armstrong, you know, when he when he picked up the ball for the first one, I thought, oh, fair enough. Because again, you're looking around and thinking, mm, slim pickings here. Mm. Who's, who, who fancies it? Adam Armstrong clearly wants to take it, um, and he and he buried it. I was quite confident he was going to bury it because of who the opposition goalkeeper was. Because <laughs> your uh, old friend, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that, I also remember him in that penalty shootout where he basically colla- collapsed in the corner mm. six times and um, and didn't get near any of them. So I was I was quite confident with the first one, and I was very confident with the second one for the for the same reason um, because it's. It's not in his locker to have a great game at St Mary's. So, um, so no, I was I was happy that uh, that it's good for Adam Armstrong. It'd be good for his confidence. Um, you know, I'd still like to see. You know, you you, you want to see a goal from open play, don't you? Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't just fly off the back of his head. <laughs> you, you you know you, you you want to see him being put through, taking on the last man and smashing it in, and then the, he you know there's there's obviously. You know, his his confidence has obviously taken a batter in the last couple of years, and however the goals go in, it, it's it's going to build him up. And um, yeah, and and happy days. He 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 will hopefully carry on scoring. With regards to the the corners and stuff, um, when Ryan Manning went over and took her from the left hand side, they were really da- from the right hand mm-hmm. side. Sorry, they were really dangerous. Uh, I really liked it, and it, it annoyed me in the last minute when Sam Amo took one, and he tried to take it left footed. And, and it was rubbish. It didn't get above knee height. And I thought, you know, I think it was four all at the time. Um, but I think they just wanted the nearest player to take it because we're running out of time sort of thing. What but, game was yeah. it where Ryan Manning delivered a free kick in pre-season that was a really good ball in the Bournemouth. Bournemouth. The Bournemouth one, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So he's yeah. obviously got it in his locker. Yeah, so they, they, yeah, they got, I mean, Smallbone hit a couple of good ones. He hit a couple of duff ones from the other side. But, um, but yeah, I mean, other. It, it's like when you, um, you know, when you clear out, clear out certain players other players can you know suddenly have their chance to shine i mean mm. I, when um when charlie alcaraz 
signed his sort of YouTube compilation videos, there was a few free kicks in there. So, you know, perhaps perhaps he's a he's the man who's going to um, is going to take on that when um, when we get one around the edge of the box. So, uh, so yeah, I'm um, I'm happy with the way the way things have, have worked out, and we have no choice. So we have to find someone else. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so TSP player of the week then, before we move on to the Plymouth game, I think Adam Armstrong, for me, just scoring that penalty in the, the 97th minute or 96th minute, whatever it was, and also that tackle. Um, Alfie, I know we talk about your your player ratings. Is it the same for you or anybody else that stood out this week? Yeah, I think I can't actually remember the top of there. There's quite a busy period doing those, but I think Adam Armstrong was uh, eight for me out of 10 and probably the highest rated player. So at the end of the day, he scored two penalties, which is not an easy task. Kane couldn't do it in the World Cup quarterfinal, otherwise we'd been all back uh, dancing around the streets um but he did it he, and it, that tackle like you say was unbelievable so yeah adam armstrong and hopefully build up his confidence i got an update to my stat as well Stephen glenn it's now 10 goals in his last five championship appearances <laughs> not bad Rich not bad the form and 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 both uh do you both agree um steve glenn um for player of the week adam armstrong or anybody else that's jumped out for you yeah i think so um i mean i think you can you can I think he's the guy that's had the the obvious impact with the goals. Um, I think you could make claims that m- quite a few other players had like 10, 15 minute bursts of input of sort of real impact. Like Alcaraz came alive in the last 15 minutes of the game, mm. whereas the first hour or so he was largely anonymous. Uh, Stu Armstrong was good in the first half, but faded, faded sort of quite a lot in the second as as he kind of tends to do. Um, in games where he starts, um, Smallbone was was kind of all right first 20, 25 minutes. Um, then Norwich kind of got a bit of a bit of a handle on him, um, and obviously Charles came on last last twenty or so and, and was and looked very good. So there's there's a case for for a number of players, but I think Armstrong was the one that kind of had that impact across the whole across the whole ninety minutes really. Glenn, do you agree? Um, if I was. Oh. So, player of the week, does that include the Gillingham game? Because yeah. if, it, if it does, well, Alex McCarthy, obviously, he was great. Um, <laughs> then that no, means we're going to have to put the Twitter poll. Adam Armstrong or Alex McCarthy? No, that's a big dirty <laughs> lie. I mean, no, if you are including the Gillingham game, then Sam Amoamoyor was great in that game. He was the yeah. only one who was. Um, and he did well in his 10 minutes that he came on um, yeah. yesterday. So, I mentioned him. Um, I would also from yesterday include Che Adams because I thought he made quite a big difference when he came on. Yeah. Um, just slightly more of a physical presence against Gibson and uh, he's the other guy, Duffy. So um, I, I think that that though that substitution probably wouldn't have been made at that time without the injury. I thought it was as substitutions go. I thought that was spot on, and it, mm-hmm. it did um, it did sort of majorly change the uh, direction of travel of the game. So uh, it, yeah, if I was going to pick anyone from yesterday, anyone other than Adam Armstrong, it would be Che Adams. Nice. Okay. Thank you for 